I have gotten so many requests in the comment section to do a video dedicated to self-defense using a cane. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. Stick around. I appreciate you taking the time to drop in and I hope you're doing well, my friend. I hope you find this video resourceful. I'm charting some new waters in doing a self-defense video involving a cane because I don't carry a cane every day. It's not something that I use, but a lot of my subscribers do use a cane and this is a area of concern for them. So I've had to do some homework and I've had to put a lot of time and thought into this video. In fact, I've been kind of cooking this one up for the last few weeks. One of the major conclusions that I came to is that I have to be careful with this one because in my research, I've seen a lot of cane defense that I just don't think is very realistic for the real world based on the kind of attackers that elderly people or those aging or using a cane might encounter. At the same time, I also believe there are some very effective methods available to us using a cane. I don't own a cane and I want to put a decent one on display for my audience. So I reached out to some of my connections and found a sponsor for this video. And that sponsor is Tomar's K-Bars. So right now I wanna put on display the tactical cane available from K-Bar. This is the TDI Law Enforcement Tactical Self-Defense Walking Cane. Now this is 39 inches constructed with some very heavy duty aluminum. So it's going to hurt whatever it comes in contact with. I'm gonna demonstrate some technique and you're gonna see how hard this thing hits. Now on the cane, you can see these areas where you can get a really solid grip. I wanna show you the bottom part as well. It's got this solid base here as well as another area where you can get a solid grip if you're doing something two-handed. And you know that would not be pleasant. To give credit to the designer, this is by John Benner. I'll drop a link in the description for you to visit Tomar's K-Bars and take a look at this cane as well. Tomar's K-Bars is pretty much my sponsor for everything I do concerning K-Bar reviews. So they're a great all-American company to support as well. Before discussing technique and all of those things on the outward end of it, I want to discuss our mental framework because that's the most important part of this with approaching cane self-defense. Because one of the first things that must be understood when you're using long weapons like this with a lot of reach, whether it's a cane or whether it's a bat, is you have to know how easy it is for these things to be grabbed and taken away from you. In fact, out of all the video footage that I have watched when it comes to baseball bats, for example, the person with the baseball bat more often than not was overcome by the person who wasn't holding the bat because all of their faith was in that bat. They took that swing, the swing got intercepted, and then the other person turned the tables on them terribly. I saw a video recently where a guy tried to use a bat against another guy. The other guy simply stopped the bat from coming in, punched him in the face. The guy fell to the ground. He kept punching the guy in the face to the point to where the guy couldn't even hardly breathe anymore. It just, it sounded like his airflow was completely cut off. So that's a perfect example of how easy it is to feel confident about something with reach that we have in our hands and for that to be turned against us in a terrible way. So in approaching Kane's self-defense, we've got to be very realistic about the liability of it because it is one of those types of things that can be taken away pretty easily. One thing I would advise is to avoid these unrealistic demonstrations that you see on the internet in a dojo somewhere where two guys are doing demonstrations with a cane and the instructor is working with a very cooperative partner who's pausing a very long time in between every move that he does, giving the instructor plenty of times to do all of these fancy things with the cane. Your best bet with a cane is to learn how to do some very simple things very effectively. You're going to have to be fast and you're going to have to make sure that it doesn't get taken from you. The next thing I wanna to say to you is if you're older or you're aging and you need to use a cane, it's possible that you're already at a disadvantage physically. I would not put all of my trust in a cane. I would make it one of your tools, but I would also have a backup option such as pepper spray, such as a little can of pepper spray. Just if the attacker is able to evade whatever it is you're doing, you have a backup. Or maybe it could be some sort of piercing object that you keep close on your person. 
I would not make the cane the be all end all of your defense, but it is a good option. Next, we need to look at the different types of attacks that you may face out on the street. And one thing that I will tell you is that a great majority of them come very unexpected. A lot of the footage that I have watched of elderly people being attacked, the attacks came out of nowhere. The assailant snuck up on the elderly person, hit them, knocked them on the ground, and then proceeded to take what was in their pockets or in their pocketbook. Most people who are out here preying on you don't want you to see it coming. They want the element of surprise. So you don't want to assume that you're gonna have all of this time to think and prepare. It's not like holding off a dog. People are not always like dogs. They don't always approach with a bark and an intimidating encroach. That's how we think about things happening, but it's usually not that way with people. Now, that being said, a cane is also a very good defensive tool against dogs and things like that when you're out walking to keep animals like that at bay. In fact, it's a lot easier to use a cane with an encroaching animal like that. But a lot of times people are not going to give you the chance to see it coming. So it defaults back to the importance of being aware of what's going on around you and not making it so easy for people to sneak up on you. We call that situational awareness, being aware of your surroundings. That's always going to be your best bet. If that's the one thing you take away from this, you're a winner because if you can prevent people from sneaking up on you or making it so easy for them to do so, you're already one step ahead. But you also need to know that most people that are trying to attack you are probably going to be younger, obviously more irresponsible, in need of your possessions. Many of them are fatherless, they're savages, they have no moral reasoning whatsoever. A lot of them are young and strong, so you have to keep all of these things in the forefront of your mind so that you will have a very realistic approach to the probability of effectiveness. All right, let's get into some technique. And for those who would come in the comments and say things like, if you wanna skip all the talk and get to the action, skip to this point in the video. This video is not for you anyway, because if you don't have it here, you're not gonna have it here. The first thing I wanna talk about is the jab. I feel like the jab is the most practical. It's fast. It allows you the ability to hit and evade. If you get something like this with weight, you're gonna have some power in that punch. I can strike with my hand, but watch the similar effect you get with this cane. Now, if someone or something starts to encroach you in a way that you feel uncomfortable, you can take your cane up here and kind of be at an angle and be alert uh, because in this position, you're able to act, you know, whether it's holding something at bay, whether it's an animal or, you know, being able to, you know, respond to an individual. Now, the one thing about jabs is that if somebody's coming in hot, you can jab and push back or you can jab and evade back. You don't want to just jab and stick it out there. You don't want to go like that right there and leave it because they can grab it. You want to jab it and pull it back. You want to try to jab and evade because then you can jab again. I saw one technique where this assailant was throwing a right hand and the other guy was ducking and pushing back with the cane. That makes sense. If somebody's coming in and they're trying to put their hands on you, you're ducking back and using this as a jabbing, punching tool because you're still in control. And as long as you're not leaving it out there too long, it's gonna be hard for him to, to grab because it's such a narrow target at this point versus just coming in for the swing this way. Some people come in for half-hearted swings and people just catch it and take it. There's a big wrestling match that goes on. But if you've got your cane and you know how to jab and get back, jab, escape, jab, escape. Because then if they're coming in again, boom, you can jab and do the same thing and jab. And you might catch them in a vital if you're able to get in and out, such as catching them with a jab to the vital, such as the eye or the even the throat, the trachea. Boom! Hitting and getting back. That's not going to feel good to catch a straight jab there or even the solar plexus or the eye or the nose. These are all vitals that you can get in and out of really quick. Even if you're not as fast as me, if you're standing here at an angle, you've got your object, you can jab, you can still get out of there pretty quick. Now, I'm standing at an angle. I'm not standing forward. I'm at an angle with my knees bent. I got a solid center of gravity. I can step back with that right foot, that back foot very easily. I can step back up this way. So crack, back. Now, what about shots this way? What about coming around and nailing this joker with the heavy end of the cane? Again, it's not always your best bet to just come in first with the swing because it's easy to see coming. But you may be in a situation where you have befuddled your attacker with a jab. 
It may be that you've caught them in the eye and they're not as aware as they used to be. Now we're in this situation. A lot of times your jabs can be your setups. An effective shot here could be the very setup for something like this here versus just coming in and ah, trying to swing and, and catching it. Sometimes you can be holding them at bay and they could be distracted in some way. And here you are upside their head now. So yes, the basic swing is one of our techniques, but you have to set it up. You can't telegraph anything. And again, your jabs need to be in and out. You need to make it very hard for them to grab your cane if you're entangled in some way or another, because that's what they're instinctively going to try to do. They're instinctively going to try to get it from you. But yes, the strike here is effective. It's just about setting it up. When you do a swing with a cane or when you're coming overhead with an object like this, you don't want to just use your arms and bop them. You want your body to be into it. You want there to be torque from your body as well so that you can get the most out of it. And you just take your arms and bop them. It may not even stop them, but you put your body into it. It's a game changer. Speed, elusiveness, the element of surprise are going to be your best friends when it comes to using a cane. Just remember something, no matter how many fancy tricks they come up with, with using a cane in self-defense, this is the heavy end of your cane. And if you can achieve cracking your assailant in the head with the heavy end of this cane and him not stopping it, it's going to have a profound effect. So again, the most simple stuff is the best. So with the big swings, number one, it either needs to be set up or unpredictable. And number two, it needs to have power. If you get the opportunity to make a connection, you don't want to lose your chance of being successful by throwing out a, you know, a little powerless bop. You want to be able to make sure your body and your torque is in that shot. There's obviously fancy things you can do with your cane. One thing I saw demonstrated on the YouTube channel Cane Masters was standing here just like this with, you know, your cane facing forward, the curve of the cane facing forward, straight ahead, just like this. And what I saw them do was they came up just like this, right up underneath to the growing. But then what they did was immediately flip it over this way for a headshot. It's really fast and it's all in one motion. Here, here. Now it's a whole lot faster, obviously, with a lighter cane, but you're coming here, you can immediately flip into a position here. Now there is some footwork in their technique. One of the things that they teach is that the foot drops back like this when it's getting ready to be deployed. I'm slightly different in the fact that I'm never going to be facing somebody forward like this. I'm never going to just be face to face. I'm always angled. When someone approaches me and I don't feel right, there's, there's always an angle. I want to give them limited targets. If I'm here, they have more targets than they have here. So my foot's already back the way I stand. So when this comes up, I'm already got my dominant leg in the back and then I can take position, boom, and come here. Whenever I send out an attack, I've usually got my other hand ready. So I'm already here, here, here. And of course you wanna practice doing this as fast as you can, but I'm already in position where I'm standing to be here and to be here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this video to a conclusion. We talked about the realities of canes and self-defense, but we also talked about some basic effective techniques. The basic stuff is the best. The main thing you don't want to do is give your attacker your weapon. You want to be fast and efficient and elusive, and you want the element of surprise. Don't allow yourself to be wowed by too many fancy things. Get good and fast and sharp with the basics because a lot of fancy stuff don't work in the real world against younger, stronger, faster assailants, twisting and turning people around in all these different directions. Learn how to strike fast, strike hard, and get out of there. I'd love to hear your thoughts on canes and self-defense. Thanks for watching. Take care.